In this section, I described the installation of a 60,000 BTU Mitsubishi outdoor unit and the uh, branch distribution box associated with it. Um, in the previous videos, uh, I described the installation of a single direction uh, ceiling canister and also a 24,000 BTU wall unit with refrigerant lines and electrical conduit and drain all going out the left side instead of the right side. So we don't use this uh, side yard uh, really for anything other than a passageway from the front to the back. And uh, we're going to locate uh, the outdoor unit for the front uh, indoor units right here in this little alcove formed uh, by the fireplace chimney. And you can see uh, there's uh, quite a height distance between the uh, grade and the bottom of the window. And so we'll be able to fit one of the larger units and it goes up to uh, 52 inches and still stay below the window. Well, I watched all the videos and decided to uh, pour the slab myself. I uh, put gravel down and then uh, <coughs> put uh, a couple of bags of cement in, brought it up about two inches, then put in the rebar and finished the pour and uh, leveled it off with these uh, boards. Just okay, so we got the mounting studs uh, in place. The uh, concrete pad is not level. It actually falls away and the reason is so that water doesn't pool. Well, uh, we want the outdoor unit to be level. So in order to get the outdoor unit level, we use um, stainless steel fender washers as shims to uh, raise the low corners up to where it's all uh, nice and level by the time we're done. Well, we took uh, delivery of the outdoor unit yesterday. It was a little bit of a hassle trying to get it in through the uh, narrow gate there and uh, basically took it off the pallet and brought it in on a hand truck. Uh, you can see the uh, studs down here are all lined up ready to accommodate the outdoor unit. Got the uh, little uh, wood supports there that'll temporarily hold it and while we line up the holes with the uh, studs then we'll just tilt one side take the wood out drop it down tilt it the other way and uh, drop the other side down that uh, should work fine well measure twice cut once everything works exactly to plan you can see how it lines up with the chimney uh, the vertical is uh, true and then if you look at the top and compare it to the bottom of the window it's perfectly level in that direction as well and uh, it's secured so to um, use this distribution box outside you have to close it in a uh, NEMA box to keep it uh, waterproof or keep the rain from going and ruining electronics unfortunately it wasn't exactly a perfect fit. The, um, the screw holes, which it tells you how to screw it in, which order, for the bottom plate, you know, right behind the bracket for the distribution box. So I wound up having to drill a little hole and use a sheet metal screw instead of the um, screw threads that they originally intended. Uh, took a little while to figure that one out, but we got there. On a distribution box, uh, it's good for five units, but they only give you five knockouts, which at first sounds right, five indoor units, five knockouts. However, you need another knockout for the power from the outdoor unit and another for the communication from the outdoor unit. So you really need seven, but you don't have. So they expect you to double up on the communication cables to the indoor units. 
So I have four, so I only have to do that once. And I used a uh, conduit type T uh, body uh, to make that uh, not a connection, but to get two separate indoor unit communication cables in together and up into the um, <coughs> dis distribution box. Before we close the uh, branch box, we'll have to set the dip switch and the address. Uh, we'll be using ports B, C, D, and E, and not using uh, port A. So in our case, the uh, dip switch um, will have switch location 1 as off and 2, 3, and 4 on. And the address we'll use is 0, 1. The uh, range allowable is from 1 to 50. And the outdoor unit correspondingly uh, uses addresses 51 to 100. Today I ran the uh, refrigerant lines between the outdoor unit and the distribution box. The three-quarter inch line, of course, is harder to bend and uh, took a little more work and used the bender. And that's the one with the black insulation. I ran that one first and then I followed with a three-eighths and just followed the contour of the three-quarter. And it came out all right. And then uh, goes through the back and it's nice and out of the way. Uh, I needed a three-quarter or five-eighths adapter distribution box ports five eighths and the outdoor unit is three quarters so there we have it uh, so the knockouts in the back look like this uh, there's basically a larger hole for the refrigerant pipes to come through then a half inch and a one inch knockout for the power main power coming in and then half inch is for the communication cable going back out but since we're powering the distribution box uh, from this outdoor unit we need one more half inch knockout and this one here in the front is just too far forward so I'm gonna drill the hole I'm gonna use a little uh, punch to punch out half inch knockout here and I'll allow all three to be towards the back of the unit. So um, this metal isn't that thick, so to properly support the uh, connectors, um, they do supply a bracket that goes on the back side and adds some extra meat to the uh, metal and give proper support. And this one will go in the back. And then for this new half inch, uh, I'll make another support bracket out of this uh, four inch box cover uh, with a half inch knockout in it, pretty standard, cost a buck and a half. Yeah, that should work out just about perfect. Okay, so here you can see the backing plate and the lines for the power going back to the distribution box. Okay, so the Outdoor unit and branch box are all wired up. And as you can see, I can get here. I got main power coming in on the left, power going back out to the branch box in the next slot, and the communication cable on the third slot. And those wires all go down. The power to the branch box comes out the side communication cable out the back and the power in from the disconnect into that one inch on the back. The address is set at 51, 51. Remember, the outdoor unit is from 51 to 100. The branch box is from uh, one to 50. We set the branch box at one, so the outdoor unit is at 51. 
with everything hooked up, it's time to charge refrigerant. So after pressurizing with nitrogen and then pulling a vacuum, making sure it would hold, we broke the vacuum uh, with refrigerant and then proceeded to add the additional uh, refrigerant. We used about 20 ounces of refrigerant to break the vacuum to get to positive pressure. And here you can see we've added an additional 135 ounces to come to a total of 155 ounces, um, which we calculated uh, per instructions for the length of the line sets and the installed indoor capacity. Okay, so the outside work is complete. Uh, we put the uh, line set covers on and uh, the outdoor unit and branch distribution box were all wired up. The unit's operational. Uh, one hint that I would have with regard to the line set covers, uh, you can see we've got some pretty long lengths. They come in eight foot sections. I would cut them in half and join them and use four foot sections. Getting a top cover on was a real bear. You get it to snap in at one end and by the time you got towards the other end, <laughs> the first end would pop out. Uh, it was a lot more aggravation than you would think. So uh, if I had to do it over again, I would cut them in half.